Hello everyone, welcome to Self Knowledge. Today we are going to see the last lecture of the Phase A cycle of the Self Knowledge course that we broadcast every Sunday through this page. Today we'll see lecture number 50. Um, through that course, we have talked about the need to eliminate from our interior all our negative ways of being, all our psychological defects selves or psychological eyes or psychological aggregates that uh, make up our ego since in each of the details of our ego our consciousness is trapped and is conditioned and knowing oneself implies eliminating from within all that we are not which are our fears, our concepts, our beliefs, our wrong ways of reacting, feeling, thinking, um, acting, speaking, uh, our fornication, our laziness, our envy, our jealousy, greed, etc. Since trapped there is 97% of our being and only when we have eliminated all our ego and we have crystallized our seven bodies with that liberated energy then we will have integrated our being and we will arrive at the full knowledge of ourselves so to close this cycle of 50 lectures uh, we will do so by explaining um, at what point in our passage as divine sparks through this planet that uh, thing that we can call the ego was formed in us when that happened and uh, the objective of today's uh, topic is for us to observe the different aspects that participated in the moment in which the ego was created um, the first thing that we must understand is that the objective for which um, the humanities of the different planets are created is uh, of becoming solar men, beings of awakened consciousness. Each planet in the universe must host seven great races and after this the planet involutes and becomes a moon. Uh, we are talking about a process that takes hundreds of millions of, year, of years and this planet earth in which we live has already housed five races uh, the previous races lasted millions of years they had their golden age their silver age then their uh, bronze age and finally their iron age and at um, ending the iron age ends the existence of that race usually thanks to great cataclysms and a selection of that race is always kept to be the founders or the uh, precursors, uh, precursors of the new race. Each race entails the appearance of seven sub-races. We are currently living in the sixth sub-race of the fifth uh, race. We are in the Iron Age of this race known as the Aryan race and the ego was formed in us in the middle of the third race uh, known as the Lemur race. We are talking about um, around 18.5 million years ago. Um, until then the races had been androgynous. Um, the first two races were androgynous. That is, they were female and male at the same time, but without external sexual organs. And the third race, in its beginning, had been uh, uh, hermaphrodite. That is to say, they were male and female at the same time, but with external sexual organs. But uh, at that point, uh, shared sex was already needed for that humanity to have the opportunity to reach the level of gods. They had already 
evolved to the point where they were already uh, prepared for that process and the separation of sexes occurred. They stopped being male-female and humanity was divided into uh, Adams, which were the male ones, and Eves, which were the female ones. All the stories in relation to the creation of man that are found in the uh, different sacred or ancient texts, maybe, uh, maybe the Jews or Sumerians or Hindus, they only uh, symbolically represent this trans transcendental event, which actually defines humanity, and that with the purpose of achieving self-realization. The female bodies were ready there to start practicing sex with a partner. And all the Lucifers accepted the challenge and told the human beings that if they wanted to be like gods, they would have to try that fruit. And that fruit, that famous fruit, was shared sex. Um, it is important to understand that all of us have an inner Lucifer, which in us represents desire. That serpent within us, that if we uh, awaken it, upwards, inwards and upwards, is the Kundalini serpent. And if we awaken it downwards, uh, to the outside and down downwards, it develops as, um, as the satanic tail. And uh, the desire, led us to want to taste that fruit that was uh, sex. And for this, they entrusted the gurus or masters to direct these sexual practices and all couples should go to the temples to practice sex on their uh, honeymoon for two purposes. The first, to reproduce the species, which was done uh, without the need to spill the semen but a single sperm was directed to fertilize the woman's egg. That is the immaculate conception. And the second purpose was to create the superior existential bodies of the being, which are, creating, uh, which are created by transmuting the sexual energy. Each spark uh, should start working with the two trees the tree of life, which was the tree of sex, and the tree of good and evil, which was the tree of wisdom for self-realization. Um, these two trees then have uh, common roots or share the roots with each other. Both uh, trees are within ourselves and have the roots in our sex, in the secrets of sexual transmutation. Um, through sex, we can create and through sex, we can destroy. Destroy our lower nature by working on our ego, drawing wisdom from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and um, creating the existential bodies of being, developing and integrating in us the different parts of our being that make up the tree of life within us. Um, but it is said that at that time, uh, the planet went uh, through a very strong um, natural catastrophe and that is that a comet that was known, that was known as, uh, by the name of uh, Condor uh, crashed with the planet Earth and as a result of this collision of worlds the uh, Earth's crust was um, destabilized and to stabilize it, again, they sent a sacred um, delegation or commission led by the arch physicist and arch uh, chemist Loisus and Sakaki to solve that problem. And um, the sacred commission, they uh, resolved to install what is known as the conda buffer organ in all human beings, which should uh, stabilize the Earth's, um, the Earth's crust. And uh, the conda buffer organ was literally a tail 
that would uh, fulfill the function of uh, being a trans transmitter of cosmic energy from uh, the cosmos through the microcosm man to the planet. And it is noteworthy that this experiment had been carried out on other planets in the universe and simultaneously this allowed to establish the level of wisdom of each planet. And likewise, at this time, it was determined that the degree of wisdom for this planet would be uh, uh, four. That is the planet of Christ of Masters. That means that um, everyone who self-realized this planet would reach those, um, let's say, states of hierarchy, the state of Christ uh, or Masters. And due to this, the tail of the Conda Buffer was left in um, people three and a half days too long. But those are not 24-hour um, days, but esoteric days, which refer to levels of consciousness. In reality, that process took a very long period of time, perhaps hundreds or thousands of years. Um, and this referring to the level of consciousness that would be possible to reach on this planet. So with this, they would establish the level of evil for the tree of wisdom, since the tree of wisdom extends in us from sex uh, and downwards. And um, it happened that uh, the tale of the Conda Buffer originated an astral surge or lustful wave on the planet, the whole planet, which uh, unbalanced all human beings, leading them to have sex outside the temple. And thanks to that tale, they had too much uh, sexual desire and they uh, no longer waited to go to the temples where they were directed by masters in the sexual practices. And without direction, they came to fornicate or to spill the sexual creative energy out of the amphora. Um, that is that that was actually the uh, disobedience uh, act that the, those enums and ifs had at that time and um, that is to say that they came for the first time to experience the loss of the sexual creative energy through orgasm and ejaculation which is known as fornication and uh, they spill that energy that has the ability to make us gods. And as a result of this, the seven virtues of the soul fail and uh, remained inverted, uh, converted into the seven causal selves or seven deadly sins uh, called sloth, greed, uh, lust, pride, wrath, gluttony, and envy. And because of this, we were expelled from paradise that is to say that we fail from the fourth dimension in which that raised uh, that race inhabits and uh, which is known as paradise paradise is actually the fourth dimension that is the Eden and uh, we fail to this third dimension and there that second nature was created in the uh, inhabitants of this planet and we can uh, observe that until this moment, the sparks were innocent. They didn't know evil. Also, the tail of the Kanda buffer was left for a long time so that the sparks would reach as far as they had to go. And humans became terribly perverse, hypnotized and fascinated by evil to the point where they were no longer interested in the self-realization of the being. Some even began to commit suicide because there was, there was no longer like a reason to exist. And because of this, the sacred commission returned to planet Earth to remove the conda buffer organ since it had already uh, like achieved its objectives. 
and uh, the tail was physically removed from us and that is why we have that like protuberance at the end of our spine which is known as the coccyx bone which is like the uh, vestige of that tail that we once had physically but the truth is that actually that tail remained and we still have it and the more perverse we become we like lengthen and thicken that tail and that is why we see that demons are always represented with a tail and we actually can unfold ourselves consciously to the astral plane and look at ourselves and we will confirm that yes we do indeed have a tail and as a result of all this the planet earth uh, remained in the most absolute materialism uh, human beings got used to fornicating and became fascinated with the pleasure uh, that reaching orgasm and ejaculation gave them and uh, really until now they prefer to live like animals uh, rather that to do the conscious work to self-realize um, the collective fornication was called the great flood the human mind became animal by desire and all the created selves since uh, the seven causal selves as they continue fornicating they multiplied into hundreds and thousands of details and all these animals were taken in pairs to Noah's Ark which represents our um, seminal envelope and it is said that they were taken in pairs because all of ourselves are dual. They have their positive and their negative aspects. Hence, we need to draw the wisdom of both, of good and evil. And this was done so that uh, the day we decide to regenerate ourselves, we find the raw material to work on ourselves in our creative energy of the Holy Spirit. Um, from there, we will come, uh, or from there we will like draw love or fire, and we will draw wisdom or light uh, when learning to die in oneself. And that is why the importance of receiving the knowledge, this knowledge, and working with the three factors for the revolution of the consciousness so that through the psychological death we eliminate our ego and through spiritual birth by practicing suprasex we carry out the construction of the existential bodies with uh, the sexual creative energy and we developed in us the tree of life which has also uh, been represented as the christmas tree uh, through which we will receive all those gifts that are all the virtues, uh, the powers, the faculties, the forces, our bodies, etc. And um, where the birth of our individual Christ will take place. Um, we must understand that if the exit was given by sex, the return to paradise must also be made by sex. If we don't learn to practice super sex there will be no uh, regeneration possible in sex is the possibility of being of each human being in sex is the possibility of the second birth that is why it is important to understand the need to stop fornicating that is to stop spilling our inner waters so that this great um, deluge or great flood ceases within us and the sacred fire of the Kundalini can be lit in our interior. Now, the most important thing is to understand the uh, hypnotism in which we find ourselves, which doesn't allow us to value or have a true objective of existence. Um, if we understand the illusion in which we find ourselves with uh, these uh, material things that are uh, an illusion, this material world that is an illusion, we will see how important it is to start working on our inner world. Um, it is essential that we understand 
very well that there are only two types of matrimony. Um, the first type are those that are done for the purpose of fornication, which are all of them. Because all human beings on this planet seek only for pleasure and fun in sex and for the animal enjoyment uh, without any transcendent desires. And the second type of matrimony, where uh, the one uh, where we um, like agrees with the Holy Spirit to never fornicate in order to be able to self-realize the being. In this way, the process uh, of regeneration will begin in ourselves and that regeneration process is to uh, regain the lost power. This uh, begin to live the process that we saw in the, in the previous lecture when we talk about the culinary, which is the process of um, the genesis, that is to become true men and recover all the power and regenerate our seed by working in the recovery of our inner waters. And uh, when going to work on the tree of life, uh, fire and water must go, as I was saying, inwards and upwards, and the ascending fire is called the Kundalini. When uh, the sacred fire is lit in us, the entire black lodge comes over to tempt us. So we have to be uh, very careful not to fall into adultery because everything would be lost. Uh, but there is something else. If the person uh, does not do the work to stop fornicating, if the person um, already lit up the sacred fire and is already crystallized in that energy to regenerate the physical body and regenerate the vital body, create the astral body, etc. But the person continues to fornicate. For each fornication, he loses two vertebra of energy in the spine. And uh, we are going to see someone who wants to raise a 33 vertebra by seven bodies because it is a long job and it costs a lot. Um, approximately 24 sexual practices takes to raise those two vertebra and they are going to be lost in only one sexual fall in only one sexual practice. There, the importance of um, eliminating the fornicator self, there, the importance of understanding the importance of uh, practicing sex with love, fidelity, and chastity. Um, we must take this into account that the most important thing is that we get to know that the, reprodu the reproduction of the beast, which is uh, the ego in us, is done through fornication, through adultery, and uh, through lack of love. When any of this occur, we work uh, to create more ego and to conquer the abyss. And uh, if the ego is going to end, if we decide to do this work of regenerating ourselves, we must stop creating more ego. If we don't stop creating selves, the ego will continue to grow. So there is a need to initiate a serious work against fornication because it is the one that in the physical plane spends all the energy that the physical body uh, condenses. And we have to know that when a person already had this knowledge, uh, well, they have to decide because already knowing about the power of energy, the definition will be angel or demon. There is no more. If knowing the power enclosed in sexual energy, we decide to stop spilling it and we uh, begin to make it ascend through our spine through the sexual union with our partner in fidelity, chastity, and love in the practice of supra-sex, then we will become angels and later on we will become gods 
all the angels and the gods in their different uh, hierarchies that exist were born insects. Um, but if, on the contrary, knowing already the power and the value of the sexual energy, we, we, we continue to uh, pour it out. We continue uh, not to abandon the animal pleasure of orgasm and ejaculation, then we will continue to become more and more uh, perverse, uh, sleep in our consciousness more and more, and we will end up becoming real demons. And there are only those two alternatives. Either you go one way or you go the other. Knowledge has always been a great responsibility. Once we have the knowledge, we act awake, consciously. And um, this lecture, being the last one, um, can be like very strong and even complex for us to understand. But uh, invitation is for us to uh, reflect on it and to ask our inner being to direct us, to give us light, to give us clarity about the path that leads us to self-realization and to ask our inner being if this path is really found in the wise use of sex. And for this we have the tools. We have meditation, we have astral unfolding, we have um, reflection, etc. And uh, the invitation is, uh, the one that we always give is to practice, to check, to investigate and to reach, yes, our own uh, inner knowledge. And, well, this has been the topic of today. With this, we conclude the phase A of the self-knowledge course. Um, all the lectures will remain recorded here on the page, and in case you want to consult them at any time, we are also always available um, for any question through the messenger, and we have the lectures here on the page, and um, soon we will be starting at the same time the cycle of 25 lectures of phase B. And at another time we will restart the phase A cycle. So, uh, well, thank you very much to everyone who accompanied us in the cycle of the course. And I wish you much uh, strength, much uh, encouragement, and much... Um, wisdom, light in your own inner black. And uh, well, see you soon. Thank you very much.